everyone. Today we are going to talk about the transport in the cells. How transport happen or how the things are going to move inside and outside from the cell. So let's move to the board first. So basically the transport in the cell happen by the two ways, the passive transport and the active transport. And the difference between both of these is the passive transport means the movement of the molecules, but there is no need of energy. We are going to talk about the active transport. Energy is needed to move the molecules or move the particles inside and outside the cells. So today we are going to discuss about the passive transport, how passive transport happen in the cells and especially in the multicellular organisms. So the first process in the passive transport is the diffusion and the second one is the osmosis. The diffusion is the movement of the molecules from highly concentrated area to the low concentrated area. Highly concentrated means the particles amount are higher in that area and they have to move into the other areas where they are present in the less amount. That is the diffusion. So today in this lecture, we will discuss only about the diffusion and osmosis will be discussed in the next lecture. So here is the basics of the diffusion. You can see here in the diagram, the perfume particles are there. The perfume particles are highly concentrated at one corner of the box. And other one, there is an air in the other side. So what is going to happen? The diffusion will happen because all the particles are present at the highly concentrated area. So they are going to spread into the whole box. And in this next diagram, you can see all the particles diffuse into the air. And when diffusion stops, when they are evenly distributed all over. That is all about the diffusion. Now we have to talk how diffusion happens through the cell membrane. We know that the cell contains a membrane between them. So how it will happen? You can see in the diagram, the glucose that is the important part of our body and we need it for the respiration process that is present outside the cell membrane. Glucose is able to cross cell membrane. It is present outside. So what will happen? It is present outside in high concentration and inner side there is no glucose molecules. So glucose molecules start moving inside. And in the third part, you can see everywhere the glucose amount is equal. The glucose spread equally everywhere. Now, if the concentration is going to be high in the inner side, they are going to move outside. And if the outside is high, then they are going to move inside. But it is important that cell membrane doesn't allow all the particles to move inside. Like starch, starch is a greater molecule, a bigger molecule. So cell membrane is not going to allow it to cross the it. Next, we have to talk about some things that are going to affect the diffusion rate. We call them factors, how different factors affect the diffusion rate. So there are three important factors. First, the concentration gradient difference, Second one is the temperature. And the third one is the surface area of membranes separating two regions. So first discuss the concentration gradient. As I told you before, if the concentration gradient is great, greater one, concentration gradient greater, how it happened? It's mean one side contain high amount of the particle and the other region contain less amount. So that is the difference between the concentration gradient. So if the concentration gradient is higher than the Diffusion rate is higher one, mean more molecules are going to move. Like you can say in the room, we have 100 person in a one room. And outside the room, there are only one or two person. So that is the diffusion, uh, sorry, concentration gradient. The difference in the concentration gradient mean one side contain high amount of people and the other side contain less. So what will happen? The party, uh, sorry, not the particle, the pupils are going to move outside from the room. Why? Because they are present in a highly concentrated area. So they are going to move outside in a high uh, manner. Second one, the temperature. Temperature is the second factor that is going to affect the diffusion rate. We know that temperature provide energy. And when the particles will get the energy, they are going to move with more speed. So if we are going to increase the temperature, the particle will get the energy and they will move with more speed. And when they will, move, they will move with more speed, its mean diffusion rate is going to be greater one. 
Next is the surface area. That is the important factor. We know that. I'm going to give you an example. If we are going to uh, make a hole in a balloon, what will happen? The air particles are going to move outside. What does it mean? If there is a smaller hole, the particles are going to move slowly. But if there is a larger hole, this means they are going to move with the speed. So that is the surface area. That how much surface area they will get for the movement. If they, we are going to provide more surface area, the particles will move with the more speed. Important example are like in the lungs. When we talk about the human lungs, human lungs have the alveoli. What the alveoli do? They are just going to provide the largest surface area for the exchange of the gases. So surface area is the very important one in the movement of the particles. Now we have to talk about the multicellular organisms. As we all know that the multicellular organism, they have the special systems for the diffusion, for the osmosis and the active transport. As we can talk about the small intestine. What the small intestine do? They have small villi in them. Why they have villi? Because absorption of food is going to happen through the small intestine. If there is no villi, this means the absorption of food is going to be slower one. So if villi are present, villi are the hair-like structure. You can see in the diagram, they are hair-like structure. So the particles are going to move with this high speed because they provide the greater surface area from here to here, then here to here. This all surface area is provided by the villi. So movement is more. The second example, an important one, is the lungs. We know that exchange of gases happen through the lungs. And what the lungs have, they have the alveolus. What are the alveolus? Alveolus are balloon-like structure. If the balloon-like structure, for example, here is a thing. This is only one surface. So it means lesser exchange of gases is going to take this. But if we are going to increase the surface area inside, we have the alveoli. So what will they do? They will provide more surface area. So more gas exchange can happen. Carbon dioxide move outside through the lungs and oxygen is going to move inside. And the concentration gradient, again, important here. We know that oxygen is present high in a higher amount in the outside environment. So oxygen is going to move inside. We are going to respire the oxygen into the lungs and carbon dioxide is going to produce inside the body. So it is going to move out. That is going to move. Uh, we are going to say that they are going to, we are going to exhale it outside the body. So this is all about the diffusion. And if you get any question related to this, you can ask. Take care. Bye.